Hi folks, hope you're okay today. We're here to share with you the Word of God. It says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's the power of the Lord unto salvation to everyone that believes to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That the Bible was given to be a hope of reconciliation that we can be reconciled to God. That we can come to know God and be reconciled with God. The only way to know God is that Christ died on that cross, he shed his blood on that cross, and when he died on that cross, he died to save us. He took the wrath that you and I deserve. You see, we cannot get into the kingdom of heaven by our own strength. We cannot get into the kingdom of heaven by what we do. And in the Bible it says, Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt honor thy father and mother. We can't break these commandments. If we break these commandments, we become guilty. We become guilty. God bless you. Come along with that. We become guilty. But how do we get right with God? How do we get clean with God? By the cross. By knowing that Christ died on that cross. That he died on that cross for you and me. To reconcile us to him to bring us home to Him. There's a wonderful, wonderful hymn, and it says, When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. The Prince of Glory died on that cross to redeem us, to bring us home. And we can be brought home by the cross today. By knowing that Christ died on that cross, that Christ gave His life for us on that cross. My name is Jason, I'm here preaching the gospel in Cheetah Mill. And um, there's nobody with me today, normally I have a few guys with me at least. I'm just waiting for my car to be fixed at the garage. So I'm just doing a little bit of evangelism in, in the city, in, in, the, in the town centre here. But the reason why I'm doing it is it says in the Bible, the love of Christ compels us. The love of Christ compels us. You know? And we've been given a ministry of reconciliation and we need to get out and share the gospel. I know it looks crazy, not many people here. Normally we do get crowds, normally we get lots of people come and talk to us. But you know, we need your help. We need you to come out to pray for us. We need you to come out and uh, stand with us and evangelize. We need people who believe in preaching in the power of prayer. And uh, we're doing this all the time. We're doing it in Middleton, we're doing it in Liverpool, we're going to Bolton soon, we're doing it in Manchester. And we, we have lots of people that come and talk to us. And uh, it, it's a wonderful ministry, but we need more people that are committed to evangelizing and to reaching out. These are dark days. The, the, the end is nigh. Things are getting worse and worse, and these people are lost. And they need us to share this gospel. We've been given a ministry of reconciliation. 
Paul talks about it in, Rome, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It's a ministry of reconciliation where we can preach a message that brings people home. The church won't come out. If the church does come out, she'll play, she'll put rap music on. I'm not against that, but they'll put rap music on or they'll do stuff but it, uh, like that. And, but at the end of the day, these, these methods are not the, the biblical methods. If you study 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says by the foolishness of preaching. And it's by the preaching of the word of God. And we need to preach this message. We need to preach it on the housetops. We need to preach it everywhere we go. And then when people hear the message, they'll come to know the Lord. We were here with young people uh, in Manchester over the last few weeks. We've been preaching the cross and uh, it looked very difficult. We had lots of opposition, lots of difficult uh, shouting at us and all sorts of things by the young people. But one week ago when we were leaving, after a few weeks of preaching, one guy on, his, on the skateboard said, or on his bike, I can't remember, he said, you know, Jesus died on that cross for us. The preaching had got through to him, but he understood that Christ died on that cross for him. And we need to get out. If we preach the message, God will honor it. But we need to be praying. We need to be united as God's people. There's so much division amongst God's people. People are divided on, on issues that are not important. And, and we need to be focused on proclaiming the gospel. Spurgeon said he could do no good when he was preaching it, but God's people were not united. And if there isn't unity amongst God's people, then there will be no blessing. And I'm not on about ecumenicism. I'm not, I don't believe in ecumenicism where we, we get with the Unitarians and, and, and different groups that don't believe in the Bible. No, I don't want to do that. I don't want to uh, meet with people who, who compromise the gospel, but I want to meet with people that believe the Bible, believe the gospel, and believe the word of God. And there's power in unity. There's real power in unity. And we need to be united. We need to be united and we need to be focused on the proclamation of the gospel. And it saddens me that we're not getting out. You know, as a how many pastors do you know that actually get out and evangelize? They're supposed to be pastors, they're supposed to be shepherds of souls, they're supposed to be physicians of souls, but they're not getting out, they're not preaching the gospel. We need to be preaching the gospel. And if you're a pastor today, I would encourage you to share the gospel, to get out. If it's get a table, give free hot dogs away, or give uh, uh, free literature on a table, and, and then just share the gospel. We can do these things, you know. Um, but as ministers, you should be sharing the gospel. And the street preaching, you know, there is no respect in the church for street preaching, which is crazy because, you know, all the great preachers in the history at least went out and preached on the streets. You know, they, they had ministries of, of preaching out. Whitfield, Wesley were street preachers. You know, some of the great preachers of, of, of history were people who went out and preached on the streets. And there is this kind of ethos in the church today that we need to just be sharing the love of God. And if we share the love of God, people will come in. Yeah, we need to share the love of God, no doubt about it, but we need to preach the law. The law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. We need to preach the wrath of God, the holiness of God. We need to preach the whole counsel of God. And if we don't do that, the church will become secularized. The church, because it's making a message uh, in its own image, will just become secularized. Because it's all love, 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 but it's not the real God. God is a God of love, holiness, and wrath justice and you cannot change God for your own uh, or, 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 or. so I'm encouraging you today you know I'm out most days these days I'm evangelizing on the streets I'm in Cheetah Mill today sharing the gospel I'll be in Middleton later on today then I'll be in Manchester later on in, in, uh, in, in the evening and uh, sharing the gospel I'll be preaching my heart out, I'll be talking to people. And all I'm asking from you is that you share the gospel. That you get out and share the gospel. You young people can get out and share the gospel. You know, yes, we need to live our lives. Yes, we need to do it with our life. But we also need to preach it. And the reason why we don't like preaching is 
because we don't like being challenged. We don't like being challenged in this country. And it's time that we challenge. It's time that we spoke out. It's time that we spread the gospel. So I'm encouraging you to come out with me. You can find my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com, jasonbirdspreacher.com. And if you have a love for souls, if you want to be united, you know, I'm a Calvinist. I believe in the Westminster Confession of Faith. And, you know, that's what, what I believe. I believe in the in, in Reformed theology. I believe in those things. But if you are a person, maybe you're not a Calvinist, but you believe the fundamentals of the faith, you might be Pentecostal, you might even be Arminian or whatever. But you believe the fundamentals of the faith and you want to be united in Christ and you want to proclaim the gospel, then I'm asking you to come out with me. I'm asking the Calvinists to come out with me. I'm asking people who love the Lord and, and want to see the gospel proclaimed to come out with me. To stand with me in prayer. I need you to stand with me in prayer. I need you to stand with me in, in this. We need more prayer, we're getting more and more opposition. We're getting opposition from the secularists of today. They don't like what's being preached and they're making their voice heard. They are beginning to oppose the preaching of the gospel. And we need you to back us, we need you to pray for us, we need you to stand for us. But we need a team. I have some good guys with me, they're the best team ever. But we need more on that team. We need more people who are willing to work with us, more people who are willing to come out with us, people who are willing to train with us. We can train you up. We can disciple you. We, we can help you. We can support you. We need pastors to stand with us, to, to be with us, and to pray for us, and to have the vision that we have. So I'm asking you today to pray about having a heart for outreach, having a heart to reach this nation, and to reach the nation with the gospel and to preach the word of God. Paul says to Timothy, preach the word in season, out of season. Let's go to the people. I charge thee, 1, 2, 2 Timothy chapter 4, I charge thee, therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, reprove rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth. From the truth, and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist. I have fought the good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at the appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, rebuke, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when, when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they eat to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things in your affliction do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. You know, the church is becoming secular. 
she's imbibing the world. And we might have these mega churches in the UK at the moment where they're absolutely full. But they're not, they've, they've got a form of godliness, but they don't have a power. We're not affecting our society. And we're not affecting our society because the church has become weak. And it's because she's turned away from the preaching of the word. It's because she's ignoring the word of God. We've put pastors and leaders in the churches that aren't preaching the word. People who shouldn't be in the ministry. Who are not preaching what they should. They're not preaching the word of God. They're preaching a, a, a social gospel or a wishy-washy gospel. Or a health and wealth gospel. But they're not preaching the true gospel. And we need more and more pastors and preachers that will preach the word of God. And the church is becoming secularized. But it's time to make a stand. It's time to, to say enough's enough. And I'm asking you as a pastor and, a, and as a preacher and as a believer, if you believe the Lord, I'm asking you to make that stand today. I'm asking you it's time that you realize that we're in the dark times, that we're in evil times, that, that evil rages. And when evil rages, we can't be quiet. We can't sit, sit back and stand and, and be quiet and be silenced by the evil of the day. And it's time that you made a stand in your church for the word of God. It's time you made a stand in your communities, in the city centers, in the town centers. Take a table, put literature on it, give literature out. We take a table, we take a cross, and we go out and we talk to people. Go out in twos, go out and do door knocking. Do your, do your various courses, Christianity Explored, whatever. But it's time we made a stand, and it's time we got out, and it's time we shared the gospel. So, especially you young people out there, you know, use the gifts that God's given you to reach out. But don't buy the pill of modern Christianity that says preaching is not valuable, because preaching is at the heart of the church. The reason is, is because the Bible's the heart of the church, and if we haven't got preachers to preach the Bible, then the church will not know the Word of God. So you've got to have a love for that word, a love for the word of God, a love to spread it, a love to preach it, a love to share it. This is the word of God and it's time that we unleashed it in our society. It's time that we, we did that and not hide it away. And if this is my last video I ever made and young people heard the call when I'm saying, remember, John Chris Austin, remember the early church fathers, remember Calvin and Luther, remember Wycliffe, remember Tyndale, remember the Ipswich martyrs, remember all the martyrs that have died even in the 20th century, remember preachers like um, Wesley and Whitfield and Daniel Rowland, remember uh, Spurgeon and Preachers like that and Lloyd Charles, remember our heritage. Remember that the baton is passed on to you. You need to proclaim it. You need to get out with those stepfathers and preach it. You need to get out with the literature and share it. Because this is a dying generation. And it needs holy boldness and it needs you to stand up and be careful. Now I want to talk to the backsliders out there. You're backslidden, you failed, you made mistakes. So what? We've all made mistakes. Psalm 51. David committed adultery with Bathsheba and that Uriah killed, but yet God used him mightily. If you've backslidden today, it's dust it off. Ask for forgiveness. You've got to get out. You've got to serve the Lord. You've got to do what you need to do in this generation. You're a new creature in Christ. You need to cut back any sin and you need to go forward in God. It's time to go forward, it's time to serve the Lord, it's time to do what you have to do. Talking to the prayer warriors out there, you need to keep praying for the Lord. Pray for this nation, pray for the UK. We're in a desperate situation, we're in a terrible state as a nation and we need prayer. So start prayer meetings, start prayer meetings in your church, prayer meetings in your house. We need to be opening prayer meetings and more and more prayer. Without prayer, we can do nothing. So my name's Jason. My website's jasonbirthpreacher.com. 
And I'm just saying this video just to encourage you just to at least hear the call and reach out to the people. They're dying. This is a, this is a town here. If, you, if I show you. Cheetah Mill. This is Cheetah Mill. It's got very little gospel influence in Cheetah Mill. There's very, very little gospel influence in Cheetah Mill. Very, very little. And it's full of moths, it's full of uh, asylum seekers, it's full of, it's multicultural. But there's very little evangelical influence in this, in this area. And this is typical of many areas in Manchester. And this, it can be seen across the UK. So, the love of Christ compels us. Reach out for God and serve him for your generation. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, I pray for those who heard this video today. That, Father, you would bless them. That, Father, you bless their families. And, Father, I pray they'd read 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And I pray they meditate on it this week. And I pray that you'd inspire them to reach out. That you'd inspire them to share the gospel. You'd inspire them to proclaim the truth of the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.